Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ayyul Ahbab from some of the advice to our brothers and sisters who are tested by being a part of Jamaat al-Ahbash that they should be cautious about speaking about the ulama of Ahl Sunnah of speaking about the classical scholars from the Salaf of this Ummah from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in up until the scholars of today but in particular because we know Ayyul Ahbab that they spend their efforts and time trying to depict Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah as a wicked deviant or even a disbeliever by claiming that he is a mujassima, which is one of the most evil and wicked lies that we could uh, imagine. And the books of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah illustrate this. And from the aqidah and belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah also affirms that we are far away from making tashbih with Allah Azza wa Jal. And we're far away from saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body like his creation. But we only describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he describes himself. Tabarak wa ta'ala, if you have an issue, you take it up with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself having hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is the all-seeing and the all-hearing. So we say Allah is the all-hearing and seeing. We don't know how. Ayyul Ahbab. But let's listen to this. And this is beautiful advice. So I hope that Jamaat al Ahbash that they take this to heart and they fear Allah uh, of, w of what they say about those great ulama of Ahl Sunnah. Here's what the Shaykh said, Shaykh Salib bin Fuzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, with regards to those who speak about the ulama. He said, وإنما يضرون أنفسهم لأن العلماء لهم قدرهم وعلمهم ومكانتهم والله لا يضيع أعمالهم وما قدموه للإسلام والمسلمين من الأعمال الجليلة والخوض فيهم يرجو وباله على متكلمين Then the Sheikh said حفظ الله تعالى فيجب أن يتق الله من يتكلم من يتكلمون في إعراض العلماء الميتين والأحياء لأن الله عز وجل قد حذر الأمة من اتباع هؤلاء لقوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنباء فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوم بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين the Shaykh said, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, he said, Then those people who speak about the honor of the ulama from the Salaf and from other than them by declaring them to be disbelievers and wicked sinners and innovators, that doesn't harm the ulama. It doesn't even harm them. Verily, they hurt themselves. And this is because the ulama, they have strong uh, place and status and their knowledge and their ability and the law does not uh, waste their their deeds, their righteous deeds meaning the, their service to Islam and what they have done by serving Islam and the Muslims with their righteous uh, righteous actions and deeds meaning of ilm and, and so forth so to indulge and speak about their honor, this actually goes back to the honor of those people who speak about them, meaning that these people are nothing. The people who speak about the people, the people of good, of righteousness, and the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, these people are nothing, in fact. And they and their deeds will go away, even if they have a little bit of fame for a time in this life. But it won't benefit them in this life as well as the hereafter. And then the Shaykh said, Allah Ta'ala, he said, so then it's an obligation to fear Allah, and uh, about speaking about the honor of the ulama, those living and those who have deceased. And this is because Allah Azza wa Jal has warned the nation, warned the ummah, to, uh, from the followers of, of, the, of them, with the, his statement that, O oh, you who believe if a uh, wicked sinner, a fasik, comes, then clarify you know make tatabbat affirm their what their, their statement what they're saying and that that a that a people will be uh, afflicted 
with their their ignorance and that they will become of those people who are those people who feel sorrow why because they spoke without ilm and they spoke about the people of righteous and they spread uh, bad and false uh, lies throughout the community so then they will later feel the shame of that in the hereafter if not in this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may humiliate you just like Jamaat al-Ahbash Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't increase their numbers but in fact, you'll see that their Jamaat, maybe 50 years from now, no one will even have ever heard of them. They'll just be a line in a history book. Oh, there was once a group, there was once a guy named Abdullah Herari who spoke evil about the ulama, who made takfir of Shaykh al-Albani, Allam al-Albani, who did a khidma to sunnah in this day and age. Oh, he spoke about uh, Shaykh bin Baz, Allama bin Baz, the lion of the sunnah in this day and age. Or maybe he had beef with Allama Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, or whoever he speaks about whoever he spoke about because he's deceased and now his deeds he's going to be held responsible for what he did in this life and for bringing about bidah and leaving bidah up until his grave and bidah that even continues bidah say so ayyul ahbab never get frustrated and i advise myself and i advise our brothers and sisters who are following particular leaders and particular groups and particular sects to come back to kitab Allah wa sunnatul rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and be cautious of the issue of making takfir and tafsik and tibdi without the right to do so without the knowledge to do so and do not speak about allah to baraka ta'ala without knowledge without calling saying qala allah wa qala rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may allah forgive us of our many sins and our many shortcomings anything i said that was correct was from allah anything i said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam